Welcome to Face the State. I'm Ariana Bennett. Thank you for joining us. Right now, the Supreme Court is in discussions over gay marriage and whether it is a right protected under the Constitution. Now, justices seem split, with one so far looking to be the swing vote. And Nevada is one of 37 states in which gay marriage is legal. So if the justices decide that gay marriage is not constitutionally protected, what happens to couples in those states? Well, Ann Morgan, attorney from Fenimore Craig Law Firm, is here to talk about that with us. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So this original case, it was kind of a, a compilation of a bunch of cases that were being tried in different states, ended up in the Supreme Court. And it's really um, looking at two different elements of this, uh, whether states can issue or can actually refuse to issue licenses and whether they should just have to recognize them, right? That's right. That's listed in perfectly into the two types of arguments. And the first argument um, arises because uh, the states of Ohio and Michigan and Kentucky and I think Tennessee mm -hmm. are the ones that determined that uh, it should be up to the states to decide whether uh, marriage would be between same sex or opposite sex. Right. Now, can the justices decide to give a yes on one part and give a no on the other? Sure. So the second issue which you raised was whether the states had to recognize uh, another state's same-sex marriage statute. So that if the first argument prevails for the same-sex couples, then we aren't going to get to the second step right. because it will be a constitutional right, a fundamental right, and all the states will have to acknowledge it. However, you could still have a finding that it is going to be left to the states individually to decide whether they're going to approve of a marriage or not between same-sex couples, and then other states may still have to recognize another state's same-sex marriage certificate. Now, if the Supreme Court says, okay, states do have the right to ban gay marriages, but they still have to recognize them, would that change anything in Nevada? It, it wouldn't. As, a, as the law stands in Nevada right now, uh, with the Ninth Circuit ruling that our statute and constitutional amendment were um, unconstitutional, for Nevada purposes, we still get married in Nevada. But here's where it would affect Nevada citizens. If the Supreme Court ruled that um, other states didn't have to recognize Nevada marriages, then when a couple got married in Nevada and moved to, say, Kentucky, um, then they wouldn't have the same rights. So in Kentucky, if one of the spouses got in a car accident, the other spouse in Kentucky would not be allowed to get into the emergency room or into the hospital to see their spouse because they would not be a legally recognized spouse. If the Supreme Court rules, however, that all states must recognize other states' same-sex marriage laws, then we would not have that effect in Nevada. So you could be married in Nevada and you could go to Kentucky and Kentucky would have to give credence to the Nevada same-sex marriage. Is it possible for the Supreme Court to make a decision that would overturn the decision to legalize gay marriage in Nevada that was made by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals? No. And it wouldn't because it, um, arguably the state statute that was declared invalid and the constitutional um, provision that was declared invalid, that's the final word on it. That has not been appealed to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. But here's where the hiccup is. Um, a subsequent legislature or a subsequent initiative could arise where the issue begins to be raised again. And if a new statute was passed, and if the Supreme Court in June rules that um, each state gets to decide on its own, then the law in Nevada could be changed. But then it comes down to making a change to Nevada's state constitution, which is kind of an arduous path. You know, it's two legislative sessions back to back, approving it and then going to the voters for approval. Correct? That's right. That's right. Um, but that's that is a possibility. So um, everyone is watching this carefully because it's not a be all and end all if the Supreme Court rules that it's up to each individual state. Okay. So then, on the other hand, um, if they decide that, uh, you know. If states then have to start issuing marriage licenses, nothing changes here, right? Correct. Okay. That's so, correct. And then the marriages just just stand as they are. So the, the options we're looking at here are either um, nothing changes, right? Right. We could have absolutely nothing change and have Nevada marriages that are gay marriages currently not be recognized right. in other states. That could stay as it is. They could have to be recognized universally. Or, on the other hand, they could kind of carve a path for us to overturn 
that, not necessarily overturn that decision, but then make them not recognize it yeah, all? The, the biggest impact for Nevada is going to come if the U.S. Supreme Court rules on the very first argument, which got all the time, uh, to the effect of whether it's a state issue or whether it's a fundamental right. And one of the things that people talk a lot about is, is public opinion shaping what's a fundamental right? Um, I think you have to answer that yes. I think the courts will look, I think the Supreme Court will look at the Constitution and it will be making very precise arguments as we heard in the oral argument. But at the end of the day, whether something's a fundamental right, I think gets affected by what's happening kind of universally throughout the United States. It's difficult to look at that though because if you take a national poll, most of the national polls are showing that public opinion is going in the direction of wanting to allow gay marriage nationally, but that's not necessarily the case on a state-by-state -state basis. That's right. And and that's the big argument about that the proponents of the um, uh, Obergefell, we practiced saying this before, Obergefell uh, uh, appellants argued, which was that it was it was up to the states since since gay since same sex marriage is not defined marriage is not defined in the Constitution that the Constitution is pretty clear that if it's not in the Constitution it's left to the state right. and the op opposite argument is no no the Fourteenth Amendment puts the Fifth Amendment which says you can't take my Way my fundamental rights without due process, and it imposes that on all the states. So that's kind of the balance test that's going on. Based on past decisions from the Supreme Court, would you see it going more in the direction of, well, let's leave it up to the states to decide? Well, I do not have those kind of tea leaf reading <laughs> skills. Um, my guess, and I think that this is just to get educated guess, but my guess is that we're going to see the same swing votes that we saw. Um, with the Windsor case where we're going to have Kennedy writing the majority opinion and behind him will be Breyer and Ginsburg and Kagan and Sotomayor. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have some fairly strong dissents on the right. um, part of Roberts, Scalia, Alito and Thomas. But um, Roberts did offer up a, kind of as a compromise that he might not go along with the first argument about um, is it a fundamental and universally, mm -hmm. but he might recognize that all states should give equal credence to other states' decisions about same-sex marriage. So e even if Kennedy doesn't come down in the top, my guess is that on the second issue we're going to end up with a bigger majority in favor of recognizing same-sex marriage. Yeah. Just a guess. Right. Well, and Kennedy, you know, kind of came out fighting in, in arguments, too. He, he didn't go easy on either side, really. I think a lot of people expected him to fall down more on the pro-gay marriage side, and, and he grilled them just as, as much as he grilled the other side. So, Yeah, he really did. I mean, I think um, one of the best things we have in America in our Supreme Court is that we've got incredibly smart people on that bench. Um, who, even though they may hold different opinions, all have a reasoned basis for their opinions and they are all really trying to get it right. They really aren't trying to write laws, they really are trying to get it right, to get the laws and the constitutions aligned. Yeah, it'll sure be interesting to hear what they have to say. But just, just to be clear on this, um, should they decide to fall on the, you know, states are not required to issue marriage licenses, states are not required to recognize gay marriages, um, Gay marriages wouldn't cease to exist, the ones that have already been performed. They just wouldn't necessarily be recognized in those states that haven't already made it legal? Right. Okay, so the 37 states where it is legal, those marriages would still stand. That's right. So and and the interesting, want to move. No, the interesting <laughs> part is going to be that um, um, that will not mean that those who are in favor of same-sex marriage stop fighting. They'll still fight in all of those states. And... Um, they have been fairly successful in at least 37 states, so we shall see if the numbers grow. Yeah, I mean, 37 is a pretty big number, considering there's there's like a little narrow path down the middle of the country, if you look at the map, where they're not legal, and then both coasts, it's kind of like coming in to the middle, so. Although, ironically, I mean, look at you got Kentucky and Tennessee, which I would sort of put on the coast. I mean, I know they aren't. I know my geography better than that, but <laughs> um, I, I would put those more on the East Coast. Okay. Um, just for our local legal community, is there any concern for fallout from this? Are you guys seeing concerns from any of your clients? No. I think that um, most of our clients um, who are same-sex couples feel pretty comfortable with where the state of Nevada has, has fallen. Um, they're happy that they are in the Ninth Circuit. They are happy with the state of the law in Nevada.
too long overdue. I do think that, that we have an equal, I don't know that we have an equal, we have many people in Nevada who for a variety of reasons do not believe that this is the right course, but um, as is frequently the case, this is the law. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, that ha happens often with Supreme Court decisions. That's why it ends up in the Supreme Court, because right. there isn't often a, you know, broad consensus in one direction. I think a lot of us were, were surprised when the Supreme Court did not take any of the cases up that had, that had sought an appeal. Um, so we'll have to see. It's, it's a good argument, and it's a good issue for us to be thinking about today. Yeah, it's kind of been a long time coming, and, and it looks like, you know, we'll probably get a decision in June, correct? Yeah, I, we think that this will be probably one of the last decisions that comes out from the court, and they'll have to put it out by June. Okay, do you guys do anything to prepare for that, or is it pretty much business as usual? Uh, we will clearly prepare, both from a personal interest as well as a professional interest. Oh, how? <laughs> we, well, we'll be, we'll be watching to see every, every Monday they will be coming out with their latest opinions and we will be watching, as will you, I'm sure, to see what the opinion is. And um, while um, I won't try to take all of my news from the newscasters such as yourself, um, we'll be really interested in reading the basis on which the Supreme Court reaches that decision because that could have some really interesting ramifications on other fundamental right arguments. Yeah, and a lot of implications on the 2016 elections, too. Yes, it could. All right, Anne, thank you so much for your time. Thank I do you. appreciate it. Coming up